Imagine you were the supreme creator, designing and constructing your own world, complete with beautiful beaches, majestic mountains, and wondrous woodlands. Imagine creating and populating your bright new world with a menagerie of cute, cuddly animals and happy, loving people to experience and enjoy your creation. Envision the kind of paradise you could and would create if you were the omnipotent creator. Conjure the blissful emotions you would feel existing in such a heaven of your own creation, and imagine the peace of mind such a positive place could engender in all for eternity. Now, imagine looking down on your perfect paradisical realm and deciding to introduce a variety of new negative situations, systems, and species into the mix, first and foremost being death. Rather than immortal beings that live forever in a perfected state, everything instead becomes subject to entropy. All the beautiful plants, cuddly animals, and happy people you created now become subject to degeneration, suffering, aging, disease, and death. The only way to temporarily avoid the effects of these new negative systems is through the introduction of another. Consumption. In order to extend their lives, to escape the pain of disease and deterioration, and to momentarily end the suffering of their insatiable hunger, all living beings in creation must now kill and eat the life out of other living beings simply to survive. The entirety of existence becomes inherently predatory and selfish, where it was once peaceful and compassionate. Next, imagine adding even more horrors to your new creation. Imagine populating it with a variety of blood-sucking, life-destroying parasites like leeches, lice, ticks, and fleas to attach themselves to your cute, cuddly creations, causing them immense pain and suffering as they leech the life from them. Imagine creating cold, calculating carnivores to stalk and slay your innocent, defenseless herbivores. Imagine adding a multitude of new natural disasters to constantly concern and kill your creations, from famines and floods, to tornadoes and tsunamis, to devastating earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Imagine introducing scarcity, depravity, degeneracy, degradation, pollution, pestilence, and pain into a realm that need not have any such things. Then imagine looking down on those you created, watching them suffering from sickness, dying from diseases, generation upon generation of people pleading on their knees, praying for God to save them from their plight. They are praying to the same God who created their plight, and asking to save them from it. The same God they are praying to for help is the one who caused them to need to pray for help. The same God that cured their cancer is the one who gave them cancer in the first place. If you truly loved and wanted the best for your creations, is this how our world would be set up? What kind of bias, bipolar, spiritual Stockholm Syndrome possesses people to see this scenario as sane? Howdy Mikowski wrote, No one is asking, who is the director of this force of destiny, and who is the beneficiary of this setup? I have come to see that it is not a benevolent force, as religion, New Age, Advaita, or Shamanism all suggest, but a malevolent force, like the Cathars and Gnostics suggest. It does not take much to see that a realm full of suffering and anguish would not help a loving creator. It helps a malevolent force. A good way to keep people from seeing this is to present the loving creator as a non-logical answer for why so many terrible things happen. A loving deity makes you suffer to improve you, torture you to make you better, as Richard Rose would say it. People are given traumatic misfortunes, then they come to believe those were part of a loving God's plan. Then they pray to the very same God that just traumatized them asking to end their suffering. If there really was a happy, loving deity in charge of this place, it could, of course, be a much more peaceful experience. However, we live in a physical and energetic slaughterhouse. 
you are living in many ways as a computer game character or semi-programmed robot in a very insane system. How many worms have just died in the last five seconds to feed all the birds? How many mice died to feed all the cats? What set up such an insane and sick system? This world is a feeding frenzy. Think of how many insects are killed every day to feed the world's fish. How many fish are killed every day to feed the world's birds? How many birds are killed every day to feed the world's humans? And how many humans are killed every day to feed lions, tigers, bears, crocodiles, sharks, vultures, wolves, and hyenas? Why was such a systemic cycle of suffering put into place here? Is that really necessary? Is that really what a loving, benevolent, compassionate creator would design? What truly good, ultimate purpose could such incessant suffering serve? How many children have to be born with torturous terminal illnesses? How many have to die in terrible natural disasters? What is the underlying reason for all these tragedies? Why did the Creator have to include such perpetual torments in this reality? Why have we, the created ones, been left alone in the dark with regards to ultimate answers? Why can't we remember things like the creation of the world, pre-birth experiences, or have true, deep, fundamental understanding of reality? Why do we find ourselves with so little knowledge, power, and agency in this complete mystery of a life, devoid of any attainable objectivity? Many people actually believe they know the answers to all these questions. They will claim this life is a school, or a test, made to fortify and develop our spiritual selves, a chance to refine our karma, or to renounce and repent for our sins, a filter to separate the wheat from the chaff. But if so, what is the point of that whole process? An omnipotent creator could create perfect beings in a perfect realm just as easily as flawed beings in a fallen realm. So why opt for the latter? As Angeliki and Agnostu wrote, In other words, souls started off as pure spiritual entities and are incarnated to matter. Why? To return home to where they start from? Pure again? And having gained what? Virtual life experiences? Useless to the spiritual plane.